Do organic pesticides work? If you had asked me this question eight months ago, I would have said yes. And in fact, if you came along and told me you had an aphid problem, I would have recommended insecticidal soap for that, maybe even neem oil. But I was pretty confident those products work. I've gone through eight months of battling aphids, and my mind has changed. In this video, I'm going to take you through my journey and tell you what I learned about those products. And I'll also discuss a synthetic pesticide called imidacloprid. Now, before I get going on this topic, I want to talk about pests in the garden outside. My philosophy there is quite different. Outside, I let nature take care of most pests. In fact, you know I grow about 3,000 different kinds of plants, and I don't spray any of them. If I get aphids on my roses or my tomatoes, I just leave them. Now, I might spray them with some water to knock some of them off, but I leave those aphids, and in no time at all, the predators come along. Ladybugs, they start eating those aphids. If you don't leave some aphids in the garden, you won't have any of these predators. They need food to eat, and they'll take care of your pest problem. Now, inside the house, on house plants, that's a different story. When you get aphids there, there are no ladybugs to come and solve the problem for you. In the house, there are no predators. You have to solve the problem. One of the problems with gardeners is that when they have a pest problem, the first thing they do is they go online and ask the question, what should I spray? And that's the wrong question. What you really should be asking is, tell me about this pest. How does it grow? What is its life cycle? Once you understand about the pest, it's so much easier to select the right treatment method. But unfortunately, gardeners don't do that. In fact, what I see a lot is people looking for a spray to kill the pest before they even know what the pest is. If you think you have a pest problem, step one is identification. Until you know what it is, don't do anything. Step two, learn about the pest. Then step three is to decide if you need to do something and what the best solution might be. Now, about eight months ago, I got an infestation of aphids, and I knew they were aphids. I've had them before outside, and I know what they look like. Step two, learn about the aphids. Aphids are small insects that cover your whole plant. I mean, they're on the surface of the leaves, underneath the leaves, on the stems, on the buds, and even in the flowers. They don't seem to care. They just settle down somewhere, and they just suck the sap out of the plant. That's what they live on. That's important because you have to know where to look for them to see how many you actually have. Another important fact about aphids is that they don't go through an egg cycle. They give birth to live babies. Those live babies grow fairly quickly, and in two or three days, they're able to have their own baby. The other thing that's a bit unusual is that almost all babies are female. Not only that, but these females are born pregnant. They don't need a male around to have more babies. Aphids are baby machines. And that's why the populations on plants grow so fast. It's only when the population is really high and there's too many aphids on a plant, then they start making males and some of them even fly and they'll fly to other plants. So aphids pretty much stay on the same plant provided the numbers stay low enough, but they do grow fast. About eight months ago, I noticed aphids on my streptocarpus. At that time, I had about 75 plants, so it was a fair number of plants. My first choice to get rid of them was to squish them. So I took the plants that had the aphids, and I just tried to squish them. That didn't work, because I could never find them all. If one tiny aphid is missed, it starts having babies, and in a couple days, you've got a whole bunch more. My next choice was to use insecticidal soap. Now, this is a soap that's recommended as an organic treatment that's perfectly safe for plants, but it will kill aphids. So I gave it a try. I sprayed the plants, watched the aphids, and you could see they were stressed, and by next day, you could see their dead bodies on the plant. Insecticidal soap certainly works on aphids, but it didn't cure my problem. I still found some more aphids. I figured I wasn't spraying the leaves thoroughly enough, so I took these plants and sprayed every inch of leaves and stems. I got the soap going into the cracks, any place where an aphid could hide. 
And then a couple days later, I checked them again to see if there were aphids there. On most plants, that worked fairly well, but I still had problems getting all of them. So many of the plants had to be sprayed a second time and then even a third time. My aphid problem was getting smaller and smaller all the time, but I started noticing something different. First of all, insecticidal soap damages the flowers. That's not a big deal. I can just cut those off. But it also started harming my leaves. Here are some of the leaves from my collection. And you can see all kinds of necrotic spots. Those are dead cells on the leaf. Discoloration. A lot of the leaves started going dark. It wasn't quite so bad on mature plants, but on smaller seedlings, it was killing the plant. Insecticidal soap is fairly safe for plants, but it will harm plants. Don't think that just because it's organic that this is safe for plants. Insecticidal soap will kill aphids if you're very thorough about spraying them. You check them every couple days and respray several times. You can eradicate the problem. But in the case of Streptocarpus, it was also harming the plants. I never did solve the problem, and I stopped spraying them with the soap because the plants were showing too much damage. I needed a better solution. The second solution I wanted to try was neem oil. Now, I've read a lot about this, and I know a lot of people use neem. It's considered an organic insecticide, kills a lot of different kinds of insects, including aphids, and I thought it was worth a try. I had used neem on orchids years ago for scale and mealybugs, and it did work, but I actually found my other solution using baby oil worked much better. I've written about neem on my blog, and I have a post there that has a fair amount of detail, and I won't go into all of that here. If you're interested, have a look at this blog post. There are a couple important things you have to know about neem oil. There are two basic types. Neem oil comes from a tree. They take the fruit of that tree and squeeze out the oil. If that process happens at a lower temperature, there's an ingredient in that oil that is a pesticide. If you go and buy this product, it's usually called cold pressed 100% neem oil. If the product is for use on plants, it will tell you that it has the active ingredient in it, and it'll tell you how much of that active ingredient you have. It's important you look for that when you buy the product. The other type of neem oil has the insecticide removed. And in fact, most of the neem oil on the market is this second type. And it's called clarified hydrophobic extract, or just regular neem oil. If you're buying your neem oil in places like grocery store, or you're buying it online and the product is designed for cosmetic use, that has the pesticide removed. Both types of neem oil are effective on aphids, but they do different things. The clarified neem oil, the one without the insecticide, will kill aphids. I and mean, if you take this tiny little aphid and you coat it in oil, it suffocates. The oil will kill the aphid. The problem you have is the same problem you had with insecticidal soap. If you miss a couple aphids, they just start growing again. So you have to coat your whole plant with the neem oil. Then come along a couple days later, check for aphids. If there are any there, you have to spray the plant again. A better option is to use the neem oil with the insecticide in it. If you spray that on aphids, it will also kill the aphid, but I think it's mostly due to the coating of oil. But this insecticide, a satyractin, is a systemic insecticide. It gets absorbed by the plant and goes into the liquids inside the plant. So when aphids suck the sap, they ingest the pesticide and that kills the aphids. There are a couple complications here. One is that if you spray the pesticide on the leaves, very little is absorbed into the leaves, and so it doesn't really work well that way. It works much better as a soil drag. So you take the insecticide and you actually pour it into your soil. The roots absorb the insecticide. It then travels from the root throughout the whole plant and into the sap. And then the aphids suck the sap and they die. Now the reports for many insects are very positive. But the ones for aphids are kind of iffy. Many studies show that as a systemic pesticide, it doesn't work on aphids. 
Now, I did find a new study that has just come out that says it does work on aphids, so I thought it was worth a try. So I went out and bought some cold-pressed neem oil that said it had a very high level of the pesticide in it. I made up the solution according to instructions, and I drenched the soil. I waited a few days. Not a lot happened. In fact, the aphids were growing faster than ever. So I applied some more to the soil. I still didn't see much effect on the aphid. It maybe controlled the population a little bit. The real problem I noticed was that the soil was changing. It got all sticky, and when I watered it, the water just rolled right off of it. I mean, remember, neem oil is a real oil, and it doesn't dissolve in water very well. I don't know if that's good for plant roots, but I kind of doubt it. My conclusion is that neem oil is not really good as a soil drench. I don't want all that gummy oil in the soil. Besides that, the aphids were still doing quite well. I won't use this product again as a soil drench. The next thing I wanted to test was a systemic pesticide. Now, a systemic pesticide is one that's absorbed by the plants. The insect comes along and either sucks the sap or chews the leaves, and they ingest the pesticide, and then it kills it. The reason why a systemic is a good choice for aphids is that they're so small and hard to see. You can't spray them with a contact pesticide. Systemics work much better for small insect pests like aphids. The one I selected to use is a product that includes a very small amount, less than 1%, of imidacloprid. This is a synthetic pesticide, so it's not organic. And I know some of you will be shaking your head saying, no, 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 I don't want to use a synthetic. But let's look at some facts. How toxic is this pesticide? Toxicity is measured by something called the LD50. It's a number that gives you a good idea of how toxic something is. And the LD50 of the active ingredient in this product is 500. Now let's compare that to some other things that you're more familiar with. How about ibuprofen? If you had some pain, would you be concerned about using ibuprofen? Probably not. Well, it has an LD50 of 650. Now, the higher the number, the less toxic it is. So ibuprofen is slightly less toxic, but they're around the same range. They're both considered a low toxicity compound. How about caffeine? Would you go and have a cup of coffee? Well, caffeine has an LD50 of 200. That means that it's two and a half times more toxic than the synthetic pesticide I'm going to use. And yet, nobody worries about having a cup of coffee. We really have to stop worrying about synthetic chemicals and try and understand them. They're not all very toxic. So how well does this work? I made up this solution. It uses a very small amount of pesticide. I drenched the soil, and I waited. A week later, all the aphids were dead. Couldn't find a single one. That was two months ago. I still haven't seen an aphid. The product did no damage to the plants. It didn't make the soil all gummy. In fact, it's a product that dissolves in water very easily. Imidacloprid is absorbed by the plant, and it will give me protection for a six-month period. I don't have to worry about missing one or two tiny aphids when I'm treating with this. Do organic pesticides work? Well, they do work in some situations. You have to know the pest and the treatment and pick the right treatment for the pest you have. Insecticidal soap works on lots of things, but in this case, it didn't work very well and it harmed my plants. Neem oil didn't work either because it's really not a very good systemic. And the oil is not a good soil drench. I'm sure long term it would also hurt my plants. The synthetic insecticide I used is much less toxic than caffeine in your coffee. It worked with one treatment, so I used very small amounts of the chemical. In this case, dealing with aphids on streptocarpus, it's the best solution. Now, if you're trying to get rid of mealy bugs, I have a very good organic solution for that. And you can find out all about that in this video right here.